decidable problems so we're going to examine problems for which there is an algorithm now what is a decidable problem it's a problem that basically focuses on a yes or no boolean decision question so in this case a problem is decidable if there is a program that always halts so that's the important point always halts and always answers the question correctly now if it halts only for the accepting question then it's not a decidable problem because this is the entire idea so if we have a problem we want to build a language and that means we take all instances of the question uh, wherever it's yes and then somehow convert that or encode it to a string so if a problem is decidable then it means the associated language is recursive and if the associated language is recursive then the problem itself is decidable so that it is termed as if and only if now our encoding is a standard encoding so one possibility is if we use a format like you write a java program just like we simulation we write, we simulate a machine we write simulation for a machine now the actual encoding essentially does not matter at all as long as it's consistent so once it's fixed and we can move from a to encoding then it's easy to use Uh, now there are certain questions which are about the regular languages and these are called decidable questions the first one is something called the acceptance problem so recursive languages are the acceptance problem where a finite automata is equal to m comma w m is a fa or finite automaton that accepts w the emptiness problem mtfa where m is a finite automaton with empty language the equivalence problem eqfa where a and b are finite automaton with the condition that language of a is equal to language of b so in terms of proof how do we do this we can do a proof by construction so we've develop a build or we develop or build a turing machine which first checks what is the input is the input in the correct syntax if it's not in the correct syntax it's going to reject it otherwise it will move to the main task and if you notice this is very similar to how we check um, we develop algorithm so uh, let's say if we want to check password in a program we're going to first see if the syntax is correct and then we if it's correct then we'll allow the password to be saved and next time if the user comes in and give the same password then we check if it matches and so on so in part c with asking to check if two finite automata accept the same same language so how do we do this thing we can construct the finite automata for the following language which is called delta ab delta means the symmetric difference and in a symmetric difference it is equivalent to 
lang- the difference of the two languages um, both ways. So we are essentially looking at language of A minus language of B. This is one set. Union language of B minus language of A. So it's symmetric. So both sides are considered. Whatever is not there. And check to see if it is empty. So once we test this emptiness, we can use the facts uh, based on uh, the De Morgan's laws. So language of A minus language of P is equal to language of A complement union language of P and old complement. Now if we want to talk about context free languages, we can say there are recursive in the sense of first the acceptance problem. So a context free grammar is recursive which is the acceptance problem. So it is accepting when G is a CFG context free grammar and W is a string of language of that grammar. Then any context free language with grammar G itself it's recursive. Then the emptiness problem. So empty context free grammar is a grammar where language is empty. So if you want to prove one of these, let's say part A, we can convert the grammar to CNF, which is Chomsky normal form, and then check all the derivations of length two W or length of W minus one, and then conclude. So for example, write G on the tape. Pass the program in the first step and so on. Now one thing which is surprising is that the totality for a context free grammar is not decidable. What does that mean? It means testing whether a CFG generates every possible string this is a very hard problem. So total CFG is not recursive. This results uh, is something which we will establish later on. Now let's talk about the concept of configurations. Now configuration tells the complete record of the machine. So it says this is the current state, this is the content of the memory. So if we've got a one tape during machine, we write the state so such that the tape on the left side is on the left and then S is the state and tape on the right is written on the right. Now remember, TL is the use tape to the left. Now if we talk about configurations. Remember there is a possibility of a loop. What does that mean? So if the machine is deterministic and the same type of configuration occurs again, that means we are in an infinite loop. So if there are at most q possible configurations and uh, if it runs for longer than q, then that means it's an infinite loop. Another concept to look at is that of a computation string. So a computation string for a machine M, accepting a string W, is a set of configuration, it's a string of configuration from start to finish. And between these configuration we can have some special symbol. So the fact is it is decidable whether a given string is a computation string or not. How? We can start with the first one and see if it matches the input and then keep going with every step. And if it matches till the end then it is decidable. So, so this is 
a decidable problem. Now there are other models of computation as well. So these include uh, an unrestricted grammar and other grammars. So now the top level of that see, Chomsky hierarchy corresponds to Turing machine. There is a theorem which says that there is an unrestricted grammar for a language if and only if it is recursively recursively enumerable. There are other models of computation. For example, an LBA which is a linearly bounded automaton. LBA is a one tape Turing machine where the head is not allowed to move off the input portion of the machine. So there's also a device which tells us whether where the tape starts and finishes. So there is a theorem. There is a non-deterministic LBA for a language if and only if there is a context sensitive grammar for it. So to practice, you can show that it is decidable whether an NFA M generates all strings from the alphabet. And one solution to that is convert the M to a DFA because it was an NFA so convert it to a DFA and then you can see whether or not the DFA accepts everything only if every state is accepting. So it will only accept it if every state is also accepting. So in summary, a problem is decidable if the associated language is recursive. All problems about finite automaton are re and regular languages, regular expressions are decidable. And most problems about CFT context-free grammars and push-down automatas are also decidable. Most, but not all. So our computation string is a record of the computation of a machine.